because I just I was just thinking, you know, <clears throat> at the salon, I, I'm, I feel like the metaphor of the Titanic mm -hmm. kind of comes to mind. Right. <laughs> because mm -hmm. as a salon, we gather together to find financial clarity regarding our personal finances to begin with. That was last year. A year has gone by, it's a long time. So things have changed and we have done our homework in a sense as a group, you know, of course there are new people here that, you know, but, you know, we have been looking, we are participating in conversation, um, we have talked about things that were difficult to talk about about money. And we learned also some things, you know, we learned, you know, uh, some, so we have basically arranged the chairs on the Titanic, so far, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, like we've been busy doing that, because until we, you know, we really done that, we, um, we take on our personal finances, we couldn't even see our outside. Now that we are, the lines are kind of in good order mm -hmm. <laughs> on the Titanic, we see that there is a big freaking hole there. <laughs> so, you know, we are going, you know, kind of, I mean, really, it doesn't take too much. Now that our attention can go over, that fog is lifted in mm -hmm. that sense, now we see a bigger fog, you know, around our, our the structures in which we will be working. Mm -hmm. So my question is, in your opinion, you know, um, how how do we navigate the two worlds? Because we still need to take care of our finances. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and exactly. we still need to make our living and and, and do, be in the old kind of in the old time. You do how do you have to transition to. You have to live two worlds. Well, that's at the same why I invited time. you here. You yeah. know, I want you to ask tell I want you to tell us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you, do that. You, no, you really you really do have to live in two worlds two worlds at once. I think yeah. that's what we're doing. I think it's I think we're courageous. I mean I think this is a I think this is a um, you know, the the way I look at it, if, if you know, people chose to be on this planet at this time, I think uh, that we are all pioneering souls. Yes. But um, so so I, you know, for the, in the in the old paradigm, I, I you know, do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, do, do just take take care of your finances, make sure you're you're you know, um, doing the best you can. But for me, the question is always um, in in bringing in the new paradigm. It's more about uh, how you are in the world, mm -hmm. right? That you that you are consciously living from a declaration, from a from a um, um, commitment to bringing in a new way of being, a, a just, sustainable world that works for everyone, and um, and there are there are so many people who are doing this, these imaginal cells that are stacking up. Of, I'm, I'm just continually blown away and very excited. Um, so so we, we have been talking about how action arises out of declaration. You know, in, in, um, and I think we were talk, you were talking about that at the, um, uh, at the well. Mm -hmm. And Nellie shared her story about mm -hmm. how the action became clear once she declared what it was she was about. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that's very powerful. And so one of the one of the things we wanted to do as an exercise is um, is have people go around and introduce themselves again, but think about what declaration you would make if you were um, you know within the context of I am integral to creating a world that works for everyone. What would you say is your gift to the world? What, what is your, what is it that you bring to the table? You know. And then I think, I, I think um, life shows up differently when you change the context. So now we have this 13.7 billion year context. And, the, and, the, and, and nothing less than the evolution of humanity, which is right here. You know, it's just, it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's, it's all of us that are moving humanity forward. And we are not at the effect 
of, you know, um, forces. Uh, we're not blown about by the wind. You know, I, I think once we realize our power, what, one of the, the things I'm passionate about is um, finding out the, the nature of the universe and how I personally and, and humanity together can step up and co-create with the laws of nature, with the creative force to create a planet, if we are in fact evolving. So it took 13.7 billion years to create somebody who figured out that we're evolving, <laughs> right? That the, the things on Earth evolve. And then 100 years later, you know, a bunch of us are going, well, hey, if we evolve, well, couldn't we then choose where we want to go? Couldn't we use our technology and all of our ancient, you know, all, all of our ancient wisdom traditions, use everything in our in our bag to, to set a course, a positive course, and then and, and head that way. And I think I think that's where we're where we are. I think that's what we're about. And there is no guarantee. And there is no guarantee. Just like you know, a midwife will tell you. That's that's um, we, we were talking about um, Every once in a while, I, I, I wonder whether or not we're going to make it. Do you ever doubt? I mean, I, it was, I had never doubted that we were going to, that we were just, we we're going to make it through. We are going to figure this out. We are going to solve the, the problems of, of the planet. And then with the Gulf oil spill, you know where they were showing the blowout and they were showing that, um, the oil just pumping and pumping and pumping. And it was just, it was on the screen, like if, you know, you go to the everywhere that had screens on it. It was just dumping into the Gulf, and they were talking about the Gulf dying. And I and I thought, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to make it. I really had this sort of crisis of conviction at that point, and uh, um. You know, it is possible. It, I guess it's possible that we could, we could mess this up so badly that we just, you know, humanity will be wiped out and we'll have to start over. But um, just like in a birth, you know, there's no guarantee that the birth of the babies, that, that everything's going to go well. So, um, so it is, it's a, it's a dangerous time, but it is, it's, there's so much opportunity here and so much reason for hope and I'm, I'm back to believing that we're really going to make it. Mm -hmm. I really do because I, I see people, I, I hear what they're doing, I hear people's passion for, um, for really bringing this about. Yeah and the word that comes up for me when you talk about break, this huge breakdown keeps on coming up is creation. It's like, yeah. it's, for me it's creation. Like mm -hmm. we had breakdowns in the, in the salon, you know, like in any we, we came up with a penance, it was a creation, like or mm -hmm. so, which is the shifting of the paradigm from consumption, which is to be not the generate, consumption by definition is like the receivers to generate. So that's, there is no guarantee, but the key <laughs> seems to generate a new, so while we are still in the soup of taking care of our finances and doing uh, job juices, you know, like she presented last, last month, you know, the nuts and bolts. We need right. to know those, we need to continue to educate ourselves. Exactly. And, so and have conversation, everything, but, but at the same time, there is like, the key is to generate, to, to become the creator. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what comes up for me, you know, like. Exactly. In the, in, including, Including when, this, when this, the, the Titanic is going down. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should create a raft or something. <laughs> you know? uh, a hover raft or something. Or something, yeah. you know, like create. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Yes. This every breakdown, there is a breakthrough. Absolutely. Yes. That's, a, that's a circle of life. So there is a never ending possibility. I believe that. Mm -hmm. And I see it every, every single moment that every time uh, anything happens, there is a way that will 
bring it back mm -hmm. to, to life. And you could argue that actually these... And breakdowns are gifts. That they're necessary, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to push, I mean, you know, if everything was fine, why would we evolve? Right. But, you know? Yeah. And that's <laughs> how we evolve. We'd be just quite happy. Yeah. We have to break. Yeah. And I also think that, you know, say, when you were saying, well, are we really going to make it? I think some will and some won't. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's, that's the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I don't know, it just seems like a natural thing. With, with everything, you know, in any kind of evolution, there's going to be things that make it and things that don't. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's going to be the strong that survive, maybe it's going to be the clever, uh, maybe it's going to be the believers, whatever it is, when, for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's, it's like the people who can't change yeah, right. are not going to make it. I think it's the core. They'll make it in a different also, form. Those who, who can uh, co cooperate, who, who, can, who can live from compassion, mm -hmm. you so know, from I, that heart-centeredness. I, I think that, you know, part of transformation um, is, is to really honor um, the sacredness of where we've been. Absolutely. And so I think it's not the nicest job on the planet, but I think one of the most, and I think one of the most important things we can do is to, to with love and compassion, mm -hmm. hospice the death of the old, mm -hmm. and not make it wrong, because mm -hmm. we all helped at some point, gene you know, genetically in our DNA to create what is. Exactly. And there's so much good also that can be brought forth. And there's so, as you said, I love the story about your son. There's just so much fear, I think, on the planet, absence of love, because there isn't a clear path forward. And, and you know, all the, the old sayings about history repeating itself if we don't learn, that I think that, you know, um, a fear like, do we have enough consciousness to do it? And um, uh, so, so, you know, I think we, while we're simultaneously creating a new we are um, uh, hospice in the old, and, and, um, and the people that, that really, you know, may not in that sense morph into the butterfly, um, but are nevertheless part of that nutritive soup mm -hmm. that we're all... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was proud. one of the biggest lessons when, when I was uh, doing my shamanic training. We, we, were, uh, we spent days creating ritual to honor what is. Mm -hmm. to, uh, because you, you can't move forward until you honor, mm -hmm. honor, not just, accept, you know, say, okay, well, I guess I can accept that, you know, mm -hmm. but to really honor what has, you know, where you are now, mm -hmm. you know, and then the personal thing is, you know, my father and my mother and my brother, you know, and just like every, all of your own, like, personal stuff, but to honor everything that brought you to where you are now mm -hmm. without wanting to change it. Mm -hmm. And... And it brings it. It brings a balance. It's I don't know. It's, it's an energetic balance or something. So it's interesting. You know, we are hospicing the old, we're midwifing the new, and we are being born. You know, we are the, we are hospicing and dying, and midwifing and being born. You know, it's 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 amazing what's happening here. Mm -hmm. It's 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 unprecedented, I think, what's what's going on in the planet right now. But, you know, I, I think though that that that's always happened. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe our specific rate of change is faster and more accelerated. But I think the challenges that that every group in society has ever faced were huge for them at their point in evolution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, We've got huge advantages in many ways over what people had in the past. Exactly. Um, but so I think our challenges are different. I don't know that they're greater. They're different. I don't know. For me, I think the difference is, and again, I you know it may be my my own twenty twelve <laughs> myopia. Mm -hmm. Uh, but is the level of consciousness that mm -hmm. I think I believe we're, yes. we're at critical mass now mm -hmm. yeah. where there are enough yeah. people, enough imaginal cells that have mm -hmm. seeded enough other imaginal mm -hmm. cells and conversations that, that we do have choice over mm -hmm. where we go. That's true. Um, at every level, the meta level all the way to the individual level. And at least my reading of history is that, that there was a sense of victimization or mm -hmm. resignation rather than co-creation and generation. Right. Okay. Right. right, I think that's what's that, different, that's, that's, that sense that's of me. empowerment mm -hmm. of the individual and the collective, mm -hmm. which, is, which, is, which is nascent, I think. It's just, it's, I don't think it's been, 
it, it's a new thing. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you what I think. It's the, it's the um, uh, what has enabled that is the internet. You know, there's a there's a that sense of collective of of um, you know Barbara Marx Hubbard talks about the internet as being the literal nervous system of the new planet. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the signals are going back and forth and, um, you know, if there, there's a tsunami in Indonesia, everyone knows it in, mm -hmm. in minutes. You know, you can feel it like, like you know, you stub your toe, your brain knows. You know, it's, it's um, like a, it's, it's the, this, the nervous system of a single organis uh, uh, organism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and so the, um, I think I think that 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 uh, yeah. awareness that that ability to share information yeah. is huge. Has, yeah. Is huge. Yeah. And I think because of that ability to share information and get information, the smallest things become so important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it affects so many people and gives yes. so many more people mm -hmm. an opportunity to have an opinion about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. And one of the things that this is a huge generalization, which I, <laughs> I think is more positive than not, uh, that that women have tended throughout history and even in traditional society, societies to do is share mm -hmm. the information, mm -hmm. not not withhold it, not um, not see you know information is power, so I'm going to yeah. expand my power by mm -hmm. depriving everyone of very mm -hmm. that vital information, and and also to nurture and strengthen the networks, right? Uh, yeah. The networks of, of of being so that we can simultaneously midwife and birth and hospice mm -hmm. and be midwife, birth, and hospice. Mm -hmm. and, and it all seems somehow that makes sense, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it just seems possible. You know, it just it possible. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You know, we're we're up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's astounding what's happened. Uh, you know, when when Egypt, the Egypt, the Tahrir Square thing, you know, I was mm -hmm. we were sitting there watching, I was with Joey. I don't know how much of this he gets, but I I'm like, Joey! Look at this. I said, you know, <laughs> Egypt has existed as an entity, as a single entity, Egypt, for 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. And it is only in April of 2011 that the people are saying, you know what? We want to be part of this. We want our voices heard. Can you imagine? Six, I'm like, do you know what you're looking at? And he's like, oh, whatever. You know. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's astounding yeah. what's happening. You know, and exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I keep on asking this question. And I'd like to open it up to discussion too. But like when we, like last Friday, we watched this movie, it's right. It's, I don't know whether you guys have watched it. How, how, how many people have seen it? I just can curious. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Johnny, uh, okay, so it's. Like I like to recommend it because oh, it's, it's really good. A real eye-opening and um, challenging. But, but but it's challenging, and it, it, I'll, I'll tell you, at about <coughs> it's a little over two hours, two hours ten minutes, something like that. Wow. At about a minute thirty-eight, you're gonna go, okay, I, 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 yeah, I can't too take, slow start. No, no, I can't take any more. Oh, wow. It's yeah. like, well, here's you know, it's sort of the it's like in the Awakening, the Dreamer Symposium. It's like here's the state of the world. And it is not pretty, you know. It is not. It's just like, oh God, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. If I, mm, yeah. Don't know if I want to know. But it does. It does release you at the end to a, to a positive, um, um, a positive future. Yeah, but at the same time, you want to say something? Um, no, I was going to say when we are watching the almost two hours. <laughs> Of doom and gloom. Um, no, it's a, it's the first part of it is, is quite nice. <laughs> the first part is nice. No, it's really fascinating because of what it's you know like these new inventions that are happening and just amazing things that are possible now. And then it goes into why aren't these why, why aren't these readily available? Yeah. And and it gets into why they're being suppressed. And that's a long portion of the movie. And it and it gets into and it gets into the economy. It's all about it's all about power and money. It to be redundant, but you know it's just, it just always is. Um, but then you know and then it, it offers solutions. But my question is, um, and I like to pose this question because 
we okay now we are all together it's nice it's you know it's fuzzy it's we are all loving each other here we're going to the world <laughs> yeah and we are faced with any of the symptoms of dissolution mm -hmm. the process the, mm -hmm. how do we meet this thing you know this especially you know if you guys watch movies you know in those parts where there seems to be no hope you forget that there is hope that we can create because we don't even know. How do we meet that? You know, what is the because like you you know, I feel like you're your son. Mm -hmm. like this. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. I want to you know I want to express my rage, you know, my, my you know, who mm -hmm. and I forget that we need the kind of pillar, I forget and I want to mm -hmm. stop on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do we do? I know what I do. What do I do? <laughs> because I got very, very frustrated with a lot of those things. And um, basically what I what I realize is I cannot do anything about what I cannot control. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I can do with you know what is out of my control is to appeal to the people who do have some kind of control mm -hmm. to do something. You know, whether it's your congressman or whoever, the, the, the president or the head of the store or whatever it is, and, um, you know, appeal to their sense of humanity mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they have the ability to do something about this, and so please do something. And I think a lot of people are doing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't do any good to be frustrated about it because, right. because um, you know, that frustration and anger it just stays with you and mm -hmm. you know if everybody I think that's maybe a lot of the reason why there is so much violent stuff going on because people are so frustrated with their situation that they just really don't know how to do anything about it mm -hmm. and I, I think you just can't there are some things you cannot do anything about except address your corner of the world and try to make it better. It's, and I think that's part of the love and the helping, mm -hmm. you know, helping other people as much as you can mm -hmm. and, and hoping that they will do the same thing within their world. And it's just that, you know, exponential reaching yeah. out. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the only way you can do it. And I think that's how Occupy grew and mm -hmm. how the Egyptian thing and Libya and everywhere else, yeah. that's how it happened. Fortunately, we have hit Facebook, you know, right. and the internet to it's help us do that. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our power to communicate right. positive things mm -hmm. that yeah. are happening mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I just need to say this because I've been sitting here <laughs> being moved since I got here. So first of all, I thank you, ladies, mm -hmm. for putting out the energy, whether you know it or not for more people to come. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what needs to happen, what can we do. What is happening is you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I too am very much involved in raising levels of consciousness. I really want to speak with you more mm -hmm. at another time. Uh, and currently in my life I'm dealing with, uh, dealing with my money house mm -hmm. and, and my own truth about what my, what's going on with my money. So obviously that's what brought me to the money salon. Mm -hmm having no idea that I was going to come home, mm -hmm. <laughs> quite frankly. Mm -hmm. No idea. So thank you for keeping the light on. Thank you. Um, thank you. What I want to say is that all of the things that we're talking about that are happening, it is happening very much like you said. The consciousness is being raised, the vibration is being raised. And I'm thinking, as I've been sitting here, just being completely moved, and as you can tell, I'm just very passionate about what we're talking about. Uh, what I'm clear that I'm on the right path because I was guided here. Everything every woman has said has been something I needed to hear or validating whatever my own process has been about my relationship with money, my relationship with work, how I'm going to contribute to what's happening on the planet, of what's my next step in terms of my own career. I mean, all of the above. And so I think to address your question, what can we do? Keep doing what you're doing. Because is this the group that you keep doing it? It's working. 
It's working, I promise, it's working. And what I appreciate is what you're doing, what I'm doing, what each and every one of us are doing, the fact that we've all come here today now um, in this space is just a validation of keep going. No matter, yes, we're gonna go through our frustrations, our challenges, First one to tell you, I, I changed like three times today. I had one of those days, like this isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right. And once I accepted, okay, I'm having one of those days, I found something to wear and I was fine and I was out the door. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but you know, something is, is you know, simply as trivial as that, but the, the having to practice just, just accepting, this is where uh -huh. I'm at. And that's been something I've been having to deal with over these last, a long time <laughs> as the transition has been occurring, as the cleansing has been occurring, as the people are jumping off the Titanic into a, finding our own lifeboats or raft boats and things like that. Um, one of the things I appreciate about this conversation as it relates to money today is talking about, when, when I'm listening to you talk about what's changing in the economy and how do we affect when I hear you ask the question, how do we affect, or how do I affect living in the real world? Like, I've got to pay my bills, I've got to keep the lights on, I've yeah. got to save for retirement, or whatever my conversation is. And how do I still live my purpose and earn a living, generate revenue, and all of that? All I can be with, and you all are validating that, again, is I have to stay in whatever my truth is about my relationship with money right now. So if it's I need to save it, because I learned the lesson of when I didn't save it or I didn't save it right or not enough or whatever the version is, then that's where I constantly shift. And, and my thought is as long as you continue to have these kinds of groups, it, it can only grow because right now what's up for people is money and their relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And for women, I mean, that's something that we're having to shift just because either we're looking to marry our money, the husband or the whomever, or we're not in the position to do that anymore because roles are changing or whatever the case may be, our relationship with money is shifting. I know mine is specifically. So I appreciate just being able to be in a, in a room where there's a level of awakeness and consciousness that I can talk about these things because um, what you've validated is we all have that conversation but not necessarily always be in a place to have the permission to just talk about it. So mm -hmm. I thank you for having the women's salon and thank you, thank you for letting me just thank be heard because I have just been yeah. completely moved by this group since I walked in. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the internet. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Vita. Vita. So yeah, I think yeah, I'm yeah. a part of your yeah. meetup group. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I think I saw your picture even a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, last month. Yeah, you never came. Isn't that brilliant? Right? Yeah. Have you been? Yeah. Yeah. This is my first oh, one, first time. And, and I think I was going to come, Anna. 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 Oh, Anna. Anna. Yes, because you yes. said you were going to come another meeting, weren't you? I think I was, and my schedule didn't yeah. didn't line up, and I had conflicting okay. schedules, but. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be here today. I think okay, that. Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to be here well, today. Perfect time. And I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Josie, but so, I wanted that. No, no. Thank, thank you. Can so I just say that um, while you were speaking, um, if you're into animals and things, a spider has entered the room to join us. Now, spiders. A spider? Yeah, spiders. <laughs> <laughs> they bring prosperity. Oh, oh, wow. oh that means. Huh? They bring prosperity. So, as you were speaking, a spider entered the room to share their energy with us as well. So, um, very interesting. Spiders are also weavers. Right. Yes. They, cre they create what's new. They create. And I. And I um, one of the things we, we talked about with Bonita is that you know in the, in, in the male consciousness and. and, and to get away from male and female, she talks about individualistic and relational. Men tend to be individualistic, holding on to that information, you know, it's very stepwise, very direct. Women tend to be relational and tell stories and weave, you know, and, and hold space. You know, there's, there's a beauty um, and an, I think an artistry about what women bring. So when I think of the spider and those intricate webs, you know, um, Actually, Bonita even talks about that, that a woman's um, brain is wired 
in a web, in, in, a, in, a, in a web sort of mm -hmm. fashion, as opposed to a kind of linear. Um, so, great. thank you for bringing this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just participating what's already here. So, thank you. Thank you. I, no, I think it's pretty amazing that the stories that we tell ourselves and the stories that we grew up with as, as children, especially um, girls, um, you know, you're, whatever your story may be, you're not good enough, we don't have enough, um, no, you can't go to this college, you, whatever that story is, we don't have enough. So you have this, we don't have enough, and you're always, in some sense, the caregiver, because you've always been looked at that from generations and generations and generations. So it's been very interesting on my journey that coming from a single mother and being first in my family to go to college and really venturing out to do my own thing. Um, living in the corporate world, um, making good money, and then all of a sudden having nothing. Um, and to your point, Anna, is that no matter what, we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people changing the way they view their money, that money is not really everything. Um, I have people who are losing their homes, who've lost their jobs, who are struggling every day. And it's amazing to me, the community of my friends that I have, who we don't have much, but somehow we all find ways to take care of each other. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a dollar, we're sharing our dollar. Um, one's buying groceries for the other one, we're collaborating, we're sharing meals. Um, I'm watching a lot of communities outside of California creating that oneness of unity. Um, stop going to the big bank. Take your money out of it. Go to the credit union. Um, I'm watching other communities, um, especially Utica in upstate New York, where they've devised their own monetary system. So they're not using dollars. In their community, they have their own dollar, the Utica dollar, which they share amongst their people in their community. So I'm, I have, I'm a farmer, say, and I have groceries. So now I'm coming to the farmer's market with my wares to sell to you. You have Utica dollars, you're giving me those dollars. So those dollars are transferring back into the local community, which is another way that I'm seeing the economy starting to shift, bartering. I don't have, you have, how do we collaborate and share? Mm -hmm. I want to take music lessons, so I'm going to come see you, Nancy, for music lessons, and I'm going to, I don't know, like, um, create this beautiful painting for you. Or I'm, I'm a farmer, so I'm going to give you food from my garden. So I, I'm seeing a, a huge shift mm -hmm. in, in that sense, and how it's changing the way the economy is working. Mm -hmm. And I think at times we have to stand up and just say, enough is enough. And the banks aren't going to change. You know, they're getting bailouts. The congressmen aren't going to change. They're thieves. OK, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, it's We have to keep moving forward with what we are doing. Others will follow because the vibration is there to do so, and then those old institutional structures will fall apart, and as they already have started to fall apart, they are fighting against us. So we just have to keep moving and shining our light and knowing that it's gonna be okay. And those of those lower vibrations will not make it with us. The well, rest here's what I find interesting about what you're saying, because I agree with you, um, and I just, want to share how I've been able to say it this way. I, it's an experiment, right? I'm, I'm figuring it out or creating it as I'm going. Um, I have gone through my financial shift like a lot of us, and so I've had to look at how to be creative about what's next. And I'm still interacting with some of those archaic institutions, but the difference, and it was, a lot of it also had to do with uh, my own experience. And so since I don't want to have that experience again, first of all, it woke me up. Secondly, 
I am now clear about what is it that I didn't know or what information did I not have that had me become at the effect of the whole meltdown. And so because I'm starting to get that information, I'm still having to deal with those institutions because that's where the information is. And I'm also aligning myself with other like-minded individuals to um, attract resources. And then once we are able to culminate all those resources while working with those institutions, we do exactly what you said, turn it around and put it back into the community so that the community can restructure, repurpose whatever it is, and then continue to create something from there. So I don't necessarily, at least for me, this seems like the road of least path of release resistance. I'm trying to work with what is already in place and yet get smarter about it, mm -hmm. meaning for me, not be so lazy about just waiting for the information to show up. I have to go looking for it. I have to really understand how it's working. Mm -hmm. And that way I can understand what happened the, in terms of how come it wasn't working, who wasn't paying attention, who was asleep on the job or in the air tower or whatever. And then look at, okay, what can I do now that I have this information to now support it to be used in the way that it was supposed to? So I think it's a part, of, I think you're right in terms of it is about the old aspects of what's in place that are breaking down. And yet, to your point, things are recreating, but you have to know, and I think you spoke about it, have to give honor to what is. So for me, that version is, let me stop being mad at it, because I, I hear you. <laughs> let me stop being mad at it. Let me stop being frustrated and really just see what's here and how it's designed so that I can figure out the best way for me to play it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You're talking about awakeness. Exactly. Yeah, awake. Very much so. Which is lifting the fog. Very much so, <laughs> lifting the fog. And, and you know, it's very easy for all of us who are awake in this room to think, OK, well, I'm awake and I see it, and yet, What's happening right now is, is a call for us to raise our vibration even higher. Mm -hmm. um, and I think to your point, um, and, and talking about what you're doing, uh, what you're talking about in terms of these communities coming together, like you said, and creating their own system. Um, have you heard of Dr. David Hawkins? Yes. Power versus force? Yes. Yeah. And he, and he talks about, you know, you can come from the, the material power, the surface power, and the banks, and we're going to take your house, we're going to take this, we're going to and all of that, or you can deal, and at times that also engenders the force of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The force of communities creating their own ability to communicate and work with one another. Right. It forces us to raise our own vibration so that we can really see how to affect, affect change, but also work effectively with the change that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I like what you're saying, and I'm always looking at when I get mad or when I want to just say forget it or I want to take my money out, which is all true. I mean, I, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just having to look at what is my truth. Am I doing it because I'm pissed off? Or am I doing it because my truth about money right now is I need to be responsible and I need to know what's the best thing for me to do in terms of where to put it, what's going to work, what didn't work before, and, and all of those questions, right? So... Um, I think that's all I have to say, but I wanted to, to, to validate what you were saying and then also use that to look at, so what's my version? How can I still be authentic about it without, you know, just throwing out the, the what's here right now? I mean, I still need to put my key in my car to drive it. So I can't just say, okay, well, I want to put push button or I want to just beam it to my <laughs> engine to start. It's not here yet. So how do I work with what's here? and as I transition into what's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we can, I think we are, but we have to have more of those conversations, mm -hmm. very much like what you and your scientific community are doing. Right. Very much so. I'm next. Sorry, I raised my hand five times. Yes. Um, well, I, I wanted to say that when I started about three or four years ago, I was in corporate work also. When I started three or four years ago, I need to get out of this mess. It's because I started realizing that we had absolutely no control about anything. Uh, I was laying off people. I was told to do that, close down facility, Why the top people were driving around Mercedes the same day I'm laying off people and showing off their cars. And so I started seeing all these things. And I realized that 
I started with money and wanted to do in that kind of education from manufacturing because I realized that money controls everything and we don't know anything about it. Okay, and I know that we say it's not important and I agree because we have to have our purpose. But we have, we were in a world where the money controlled everything. And we little people, and I'm talking about not the five percent of the people that have millions, but the ninety five percent of us that don't have it, we had no education, we about had money. no coach, we had no understanding about the money. Mm -hmm. Now where are we gonna put this money, it doesn't really matter. You put it in, you know, I mean it does matter. Mm -hmm. Or so you can put it in a box if you don't want to use the bank, it doesn't matter. But we still need to be aware of what we're doing. So I'm thinking based on what I heard today was, first you start with yourself, right? The birth of yourself, I like that. I think that I, I was confused for a long time what is, what is my purpose. I had a purpose and purpose went away. I thought it went away, but it's rebirthed in a different place. So, and I think learning different things from many different places is the key. Absolutely. Different organization, but until today, I was thinking that why is it that I never settle in one place or one group? But today they open up to me. That's, oh, that's, good. that's a good thing to do. I'm learning a lot. Because I always said, oh, I'm this kind of person. I get bored and then I'm done with this and I'm done with that. But in actuality, I'm, I'm learning. And so it's exciting if I go into a new place in a group like this because I learn. And, and, and the third one is that the more we learn, the more we can give. Um, in different places, but we cannot give if we don't grow. So we can talk about consciousness, this and that. And the other fear that I have is that we sometimes have done, even in the past, we become the mass. Oh, this is the new thing, you know, the new organic or the new consciousness. And, and I think that we don't want to do that. You still have to be your unique self. Mm -hmm because we have a tendency to just be sucked into the latest thing that we hear. Mm -hmm. That scares me, because that's what we're just coming out of. Mm -hmm. We're just coming out of that. Oh, with the in thing, and uh, so how do we stay? And the question for me is always, how do I stay truthful to, mm -hmm. to what I want to be, and when do I change? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how do I help with that change? It's always like a big job. I think for the individuality part, it, it goes back to that idea that the universe specializes in originality. Yeah. You are completely unique, right? And your self-expression, mm -hmm. your, your authentic self-expression is integral to bringing about this new consciousness. Whatever it is you choose, but Barbara Marks Hubbard talks about following your compass of joy. You know, what is it that brings you joy? And so that you're, it's going to be different for you than any, anyone else and it will be exactly what is needed. That's, I mean, that's my firm belief. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I want to thank you um, for today. I think it's one of the best um, sessions of the salon mm -hmm. that you have had uh, for me. And you. I wanted to, uh, because it's almost 5.30, I wanted to ask you to I ask that well in the three minutes. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she never wrote the that. I know that well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask a question that you may want to ponder while um, in the back of your mind, because I'd like you to listen to the last part of um, the last this quote that Judy is going to read. It's very great. And but I like to ask you the question. Of, uh, since the, uh, today's conversation has been different from all the other conversations we had, except for Case, because Case was leading into this, right? The love economy and all yeah. that. But I had to um, ponder what you are taking away from today. How, in one sentence, not we can, you know, because we want to finish in time and across the time a little bit to order, be with, with each other informally. But, you know, as she reads a quote, then we go around the room and we'll say one thing that we're taking away. What is the what is our new awareness? But please be short because we'll be one second. Okay. So the quote this is a quote from my, my vis visionary cosmologist friend in the half day. Um, it's from a book that she just wrote. 
It says, I have learned that the cosmos is in constant transition, that it moves like a river, ever being, ever becoming, tumbling forth in the shining luminescence of its own imaginative intelligence. I have learned that the cosmos issues forth of, by, for, and from the living wellspring, its source in the changeless aspect of its own eternal being. At the heart of the mystery, at the core of every atom of being, the stable intelligence resides. In the midst of transformation, there is constance, an essence which remains unaltered, while continually evoking new combinations of spirit, body, heart, and mind. The cosmos is dedicated to a never-ending adventure of invention and refinement as the amazing process of evolution unfolds. I have come to realize that the eternal flame dances within everyone, everywhere, through all transformation throughout time. And here is the wonder of it. This is your time. Your moment in the sun. The powers of the universe are flowing through you now. You are a blossom of creation, flowering, growing up through creation's majestic turf and scattering seeds. You are that which is moved, that which moves, and that which moveth not. You possess the gift of visionary artistry. You have the potential to affect the course of the expanse of reality. And who's the co-fight? Uh, Pamela Eakins. Uh, oh, yes. Wow. Do you know? Uh -huh. um, so there you go. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, lest you think that you are powerless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
that receive it and look at you in that way. Mm -hmm. So if anything comes up for you that you want to declare here, to bring it. Go ahead. <laughs> Ponder it. <laughs> <laughs> Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Grass on. Yeah. Uh, well, I just want to say I'm so glad I came today. <laughs> so glad I came. Um, and what I'm taking from today is truth. That's what I'm taking from today. Thank you. Um, I declared myself in the national cell a long time ago. And it is such a joy to be in the soup together. Mm -hmm. um, because there's that resonance. I, I completely agree with you, Judy. That resonance is so far beyond what we know or can t touch um, that brings in, that brings in the Anas and the Nellies, you know? And, um, and yay. Hooray. <laughs> Bring it on. Hooray. We, we can do this. Yes. We are doing it. Mm -hmm. And exactly. we are being it. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are the ones. We are, it. we are the ones mm -hmm. we've been waiting for. I really, I know it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for putting mm -hmm. that forward to you. Thank you. What I'm bringing uh, home with me is just that affirmation of the conscious evolving guidance that is moving through each of us and that brought all of us here today and that as you were speaking I was feeling this emotion arising in you and just mm -hmm. feeling it and just I, it, it was it was beautiful mm -hmm. thank you uh, because it just sort of really brought this that we're all here being guided and there is this purpose whether we know we can name it or not mm. and it's moving through I think hugely as women in general and that we are really uh, this is very special for us to have this opportunity to come together and share our voices and listen to each other it's wonderful to be here today and to hear your presentation and be with everyone here today I've been so many places in my quietness emotionally and, and mentally I've been to so many places it's hard to actually pick one because there were so many uh, points of light mm -hmm. and I feel quite at one with everything you said I think anything mm -hmm. where I feel a uh, separate or apart mm -hmm. from what you spoke today mm -hmm. or anyone else for that matter mm -hmm. feel totally at one with each of you and um, uh, a choice is a, is a very important thing and, and, and individual choice is an important thing and to know that we have that power to choose. We still can say yes and we still can say no. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, there are consequences to that, but we still have the freedom of choice. And um, puts me in mind of uh, a quote from a, a person uh, that I admire very much. And, um, and he said, I, I keep praying and saying, you know, God, it would really be nice if this happened, and I'd really like that, God, and, and it would so, be so wonderful if this happened, and you know, I really would like that to happen. And he says, you know, and God says to me, all I've got is you. So to move forward in the world. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm really glad I came and I got a lot out of this. Um, I was thinking of the same quote um, that Gandhi had said, that we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that just really rang home to me. Um, what I got out of it was, um, that's fabulous. I love that you, I can now declare what my purpose is, because mm -hmm. I'm always going, what is it? What am I supposed to be doing here? Um, and the transformation and the morphing of the butterfly and um, stewardship and free will. I guess what I've gotten out of today is um, pretty much a total validation of where I thought my path was and, and how I'm approaching it and what I'm doing. Um, you know, because like you said, in, in, in the end, there really is no wrong answer. 
But one hopes that at, this, at least for me, at this point in my life, I'm finally doing the right things. And, um, and I just, even though I'm not really sure just how it's going to happen, I, I'm very, I'm very um, clear about that it will. And um, I just take every day and do the best I can and um, try to affect and help as many people as I can. And, um, you know, I, I don't know why all these things are happening. I don't, you know, I don't have any idea what's going to happen in 2012. All I know is I'm doing what I can now. And whatever happens, happens. And I'm, I'm confident that it's... What, will, what was meant to happen, at least for me. And I think the validation was not only to hear other people um, talk about this, but also to look back at all the things that I've gone through and realize that everything that has ever happened to me or everything that I have ever experienced and learned has put me in the position to do what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. I have to believe yeah. that that's, that I know what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, you know, I a couple weeks ago I was at a retreat in, in New Mexico and they asked, you know, by way of introduction, who are you, what brought you here, what do you hope to get, and what makes your heart sing? Mm -hmm. And I just unequivocally I said, you know, what makes my heart sing is connecting with people who are on this path of creating, you know, really co-creating with the source of all that is, a world that works for everyone. And so this, just this connection, just being in a room of women in a circle, mm -hmm. this is just, this is so powerful and it makes my heart sing. So that's what I, that's what I take with me. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of things that I heard today that kind of made, did it for me, um, besides all the rest, I'm just speaking to, it's this uh, auspicing, mm -hmm. midwifing and birthing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what I see is that, and also the keep going, that, mm -hmm. which means keep evolving, right, <laughs> also. So we can tell it, by the way, but to be conscious about this is the whole point. So mm -hmm. this birthing, midwifing, and auspicing is like, I do this with myself all the time. So there are part of me that I'm auspicing, part of me that I'm birthing and midwifing. And it's continual. And every moment is that. Mm -hmm. Every moment is we are auspicing yeah. something, birthing something, mm -hmm. midwifing something. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how the world goes round. Mm -hmm. So whatever, in other words, whatever I do is fine. <laughs> <laughs> organized, divinely organized inside. Mm -hmm. So whatever, wherever I am, in whatever situation, I'm just perfectly there, like everything else. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. Not just the others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Me too. Mm -hmm. And not because I'm particularly noble. No, it's because I, I am. I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I just want to say yeah. Ditto all of you. And, um, a couple of things. I mean, I feel like this whole conversation has been very affirming for me that I'm also on the right path. And I'm very happy. And, um, but I was also thank you for your, your honesty about your story of you know, thinking that you'd have something original to say that's all been said before. Because mm -hmm. that's a, something in our mind too. And then we said you declared, and then it shifted. It's very powerful for me. Partly because I view you as being such a powerhouse of a woman. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, she had a moment like that. And you shared it. And it's mm -hmm. really awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. Well, today I have, um, I'm more and more convinced that I need to somehow help participate or create, uh, continue to create this kind of group. And then mm -hmm. I agree with you, Nelly. How do we integrate all the big leaders of all this group? Because the message is all the same. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's just we can express it in a very different way. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe different people need to hear in a different way, but it's mm -hmm. basically all the same thing. Yeah. So I, I think I'm more committed. But one thing that comes to mind, how do we do, uh, or how do we train, or how do we motivate, or how do we encourage young people to do the same? Mm -hmm. Because there is a lot of young people mm -hmm. that have no place to go. There is a lot of place mm -hmm. to go for people our age, mm -hmm. um, 30, yeah, 40, 50, point. 60, but not for young people. Mm -hmm. And they're all struggling with mm -hmm. stuff, just, just like my son. So mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I've been thinking for a long time. And one time I had a dream of saving the children, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure what that means. But I think that today that's come out. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I? I don't do it some even with younger people. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to bring, I know it's a women's group, but I think men would benefit from it as well. And there are a lot of men struggling, struggling mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. much from mm -hmm. yeah. um, There are a lot of gay men too. So ah, I know. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they're evolving. That's the way. Yeah. That's what you're talking about the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, guiding somebody right now yeah. and he's very hungry for this uh, spiritual i was gonna invite him and then uh, jersey said oh it's all women they might they might bring them later on uh, yes. so um but maybe we can also hmm? we can give birth to a new group and just <laughs> another salon because uh, that's mm -hmm. that's one of our dream oh. and Nami was to create different salons everywhere so maybe maybe in, in maybe my a different spot. group with um, yeah. Yeah. Can do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah younger people and yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to tell you after oh. this. Yeah. Cool. Synergizing yeah. and creating and, and yeah. multiplying. Yeah. Multiplying. So thank you, Judy, for your dedication, for your wisdom, for sharing yourself yeah. with us. Yeah. <laughs> it's been <laughs> incredible today. Yeah. 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 So